What is going on fellow developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to create this really cool uh, pop-up component. So if I refresh this page we have two different types of pop-ups. We have a button pop-up but we also have a timed pop-up. As you see I set that for five seconds and five seconds in we got this new pop-up. Actually an awesome pop-up. It was triggered by a timer. Let's close this and we can also open it up by a button. So we can also have a different trigger, really cool pop-up. It was triggered by a button. Um, and you can create as many pop-ups as you need for your page. You can style this pop-up however you want. Um, all of the functionality is done in sim pretty much in the component, but the styling can be done however you like. So without further ado, guys, let's get started. Okay guys, so as usual, we're going to need to be using NPM, which is, comes with Node. Um, it's a Node package manager. It allows us to install or run certain commands. For this, um, to get this started, we're going to run npx create react app. And what we're just going to say is react pop-up YouTube. Now, if we hit enter, this is going to create our React um, project boilerplate so we can get in there and start working on our pop-up component. Okay, now that's done, we can CD into React pop-up YouTube and also, oh, yeah, we can CD into it. And then once we're in it, we can open it up with whatever text editor you want. I'm gonna be using VS Code, so I'm gonna run code dot. I'm then gonna concatenate on the end of this using double and or ampersand. And I'm just gonna say um, NP, oh no, it's yarn start. And now if I hit enter this is going to open up official studio code and it's also going to start the development server for react as you can see it's starting it up it's loading um and there you go we've got our boilerplate app so let's just bring this all the way down for now and oh excuse me you can go now you can come up front and let's just drag this to be as big as we need it there you go so let's just remove the welcome here now inside of our source we can get rid of pretty much everything but um well i'll show you let's remove app.css we're going to remove test uh we're going to remove logo what's going to remove web web report report web vitals and setup tests as well and we're going to be left with index index.css and app.js now we need to go in index and we need to remove web files from in here we also need to remove this uh function down here close that and that is that index done with now inside of app we need to remove um, the logo.svg and also the css we're then going to need to remove everything with inside this header or inside this app and just say react app for now hit save and if we refresh there you go we see we get the react app on the right now um, and so yeah so let's get started by going into index.css deleting everything from in there and now we can just add our quick some quick uh, reset codes. We're just going to say margin, zero, padding, zero, uh, box sizing, border box. Um, what was I just going to say? Font, family, fire, sans, sans serif. And then we're just going to have a main tag, which is going to have a padding of 32 pixels. Uh, display flex again this isn't styling for the actual pop-up this is just styling for the page so it's in the center uh, we're just going to align items center uh, justify content center and then we're going to give it a min height of 100 vh which is just the whole screen's height um, hit save hopefully if we refresh 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 <laughs> oh it's not going to work because we don't have a main tag so we need to create a main tag in here hit save um, inside of this main tag we want to give it let's say a h1 which just says um, react pop-ups and then we can also give it a button um, and in the button we'll just say um, open pop-up hit save and there you go we've got the react x tile with the open pop-up now just for convenience I'm just going to add a couple of breaks in between there just so it spaces that out so they're not right on top of each other. So there you go, we've got an open pop-up button and also react pop-ups. So what we need to do is we need to create a, a pop-up component which we can actually pass things through. So let's go over to our source. We're gonna create a, a new file and I'm gonna say components forward slash pop-up.js. Hit enter 
And there you go, we've got a new components folder with a popup.js file inside. Now inside of here, I'm gonna run a command or a little snippet here. I'm gonna say react functional component export. Now if I hit enter, you can see it creates this boilerplate code. Now if you don't have VS Code or you're not using um, this uh, uh, ES7, React, Redux, GraphQL and React Native um, extension, then you can't run that command. Um, but you can just copy this out if you want to. So inside of here, we're just going to give this the class of pop out. So for now, we're actually saying that we need to actually, well, for now, we'll just say class name pop up. Um, and in here, we can just say uh, dot pop up hyphen inner. And then inside of that, we can have a button with the class of close button. And this can just say close. You can add an icon in here or whatever you want, but that's what we're doing for now. So we've got this pop up here, but we need to actually, it needs to be triggered. It can't just be um, created. So we're going to create props. And inside the inner here, we can actually say props.children. So we can pass through um, elements and stuff into sides this pop up. So it doesn't have to be the same layout or anything like that. We don't have to create multiple pop up components. We can actually use this to pass through uh, props and I'll show you what that does in a second. But the first thing we need to do is inside of here, we need to say props um, dot trigger, which is going to actually be our trigger to pop up. We're then going to do a question mark and pass through an empty um, or we're going to pass through a block here, a JSX block. And then we're going to do this colon to say if it doesn't exist, we're just going to pass through an empty string. So when what we're going to do is we're going to pass through a boolean a true or false value which is going to be our trigger to actually trigger this pop-up and if that trigger is true then the pop-up will show if it's not true it won't it'll just show nothing um, and that's what we're doing here so that is all we need for this actual component here um, but we do need to style it um, but let's do that after let's actually get popping up first so let's go into our app and let's actually import that so we're going to say import uh, pop-up from and then we're just going to do dot slash component slash pop up. And inside here, we can just under the main, we could just go. Actually, let's do it in the main for now, as it's going to appear underneath the whole page. So we're just going to say pop up. Sorry, not like that. Pop up. And then inside of here, we can just put, let's say, a H1 or H3, because we've already got a H1 on the page. Let's say H3 that says my pop up. Save. And as you can see, it doesn't appear. But if we pass through trigger and set it equal to true, you can see my pop-up appears with the close button as well. So we can create a variable that we pass through here that we can click on, let's say, this button, which will turn it to true, and then it will pop up. So let's go style this quickly. Let's set this equal to false, hit save. So now that should disappear. There you go. And let's actually go style our pop-up. So inside of our file root in components, create a new file and call it popup.css. And this will be specific CSS for our pop-up. So what we're going to do is set the pop-up um, and we're going to say it's position equal to fixed because we want it to stick, uh, we want it to pop up overlay over the whole screen. So we're going to do top zero, left zero, width 100% and height 100 vertical height to give it the max height. We're going to give it a background color of RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.2. So it's just got a little um, background, darker background color. We'll go, but it's still see through so you can see what's behind it. Let's give it a display as flex just to move the actual content to the center. Justify content center and align items center. Now, under here, we're going to set up the pop up inner. Oh, not armor. Inner. It's going to be position relative. We're then going to give it a display, well, we're not going to give it a display, but we're going to give it a padding of 32 pixels, sorry. We're then going to give it a width of 100% and a max width of 640 pixels. Now, we can also set this as a variable, which we can change, but for now, we won't go into that. Let's set a background color to be white. And then we just need to install the actual button. So let's say pop up inner dot close button. And in here, we're going to set this as position absolute and we're going to float it to the top right. So we're going to say top 16 pixels, right 16 pixels. Hit save and we won't see anything. We need to go into our pop-up and import this. So we need to say import um, 
and we give it the name. So we're going to say slash popup.css. Hit save. And in our app, let's just turn this to true so we can actually see. I probably should have kept it on true anyway. And there you go. We've got our little pop-up. So if we make this bigger, you can see we've got a pop-up here. We've got a close button, which doesn't do anything yet. A slightly grayed out background and the pop-up actually there. So there you go. There's the pop-up. We can also add more content in here. You can say like, this is my button triggered pop-up. Hit save. And there you go. This is my button triggered pop-up. Um, so inside here, let's actually move this now under main like that. Um, the only reason I didn't have it outside of main to begin with is because without having it positioned absolute, it would have been sat really far down. We would have had to scroll. Um, so we've got this pop up, right? So now we need to somehow get a, a variable in here that sets it equal to true. So let's import. We're going to say import use state from react so we'll get the state from react and we're just gonna say const and we're gonna pass through our button pop-up and then our set button pop-up variables and we're gonna set this equal to use state of default false so let's get our button let's pass it in here so button pop-up inside of our trigger and then on our button we can say on click is equal to and here we can say we could do an arrow function that there says set button pop up equal to true. Hit save. So that's gone now. But when we click on our pop up button, you can see it opens our button. So let's refresh the page and try that again. Click it and it opens our pop ups. As simple as that. You can also add animations and stuff like that to this. I won't do that in this video, but if that is something you want to see, then please let me know. So that is a simple opening the button. But now we need to close it. So to do that, we actually need to pass our set button through here. So we're going to say set trigger equal to, and then we can pass through our set button function. Uh, let's just close this. So you can see it a bit better. Set button pop up. Let's go into our, let's close these CSS we don't need anymore. Let's go into our pop up. And now on our button close, we can do on click is equal to uh, props dot set. Well, we can actually do an arrow function here first props.set trigger and we can pass through the value which is going to be false hit save and now if we click the button you can see open pop-up and close button both work so now you can click close and you can open it so that's really cool but what happens if you want a timed pop-up what happens if you want one to pop up after about let's say five seconds after your website has opened up for someone well we can create enough of you state here so let's create here and let's call this, instead of button, we'll call this timed pop-up. And instead of set button pop-up, we'll say set timed pop-up. And we'll also leave it at false. And now we'll cre create a second pop-up. And then this is simple as this, you just create a second pop-up and you just literally, uh, uh, my timed pop-up here, we can say. And then this is my timed triggered, time triggered, that one, time triggered pop-up. Um, but obviously, we need to actually change these values to be time pop up, oh, time pop up, and set time pop up. But now, how do we actually trigger it to begin with? To trigger it to begin with, we need to create a, we need to basically set a timeout to say how many seconds we want. But to do that, we need to actually pass something called use effect. Now, we could just say inside of here and say set timeout like this and we could say 5,000 or we'll say 2,000, 3,000 seconds for the test and we can say set timed pop-up equal to true. Now if we save this will work if you give it a few seconds uh, one oh, oh there it is my time pop-up there you go it's popped up and we can close it but look it's opened again it starts rapidly opening and that's because the the um, component is changing. This is reactive. So anytime this changes, everything in here gets redone. So to fix that, we need to use effect. We need to do an arrow function. And then we need to move this function inside of use effect. And we need to pass through an empty array. So now this is only going to be called the one time when one time when this is launched. So let's refresh this page. Now, if we wait three seconds, there you go, my time pop up gets triggered. Let's click close. And now, after enough three seconds, it doesn't open up again. You see it only opens at once. So there you go, that's how you do a time trigger. So we've got our 
open pop-up, which is our button triggered pop-up, click close. And if we refresh and give it another three seconds, there's our time pop-up. So as you can see, guys, let's put this at full screen now, or a bit bigger, shall I say. Whee, there we go. So you can see our pop-up triggers here. So let's refresh one last time and you can see how it works. So time trigger, there you go. Our time trigger popped up, let's close and let's click open pop-up and there you go. We've now got an open pop-up and it's as simple as that. That is all you need. Now you can style these however you want. This is not restrictive to your styling or anything like this. It's just the functionality you need to keep the same if you want it to work, of course, uh, the open, the close and stuff like that. So there you go. This is how you create a really simple um, pop-up which you can trigger how many, how many if you want you can just keep creating these and just giving them different triggers and different set triggers and they will forever keep popping up you can also give them the same trigger I won't recommend it but you could if you wanted to thank you all for watching this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a thumbs up it really does help the channel don't forget to smash that subscribe button and leave a comment if you have any questions or queries you want to ask me and I'll try and get back to them as quick as I can now the last thing I just want to mention is I have a Ko-Fi link where you can go and donate a the price for coffee um, to basically show your appreciation for the channel if you enjoy what I do and you like the content and supporting the channel allows me to buy more stuff put more time into my content and just give you more uh, videos more uh, content on Twitter more content on YouTube and it just helps out the channel a little so if you want to help out then head over to the Ko-Fi link in Ko-Fi link in the description and uh, you can even just follow me you don't have to pay anything just to follow will also help so thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video Peace out.